Hello Sociology 213 families, my name is Jeffrey Baker and I am going to be doing my presentation today on gender fluidity and trans children and how to educate parents. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick summary of it before I go into my PowerPoint and a little video that I made. Um, so I'm going to talk about what is transgender. I'm going to talk about what is gender non-conforming in children, and I'm also going to talk about the traditional gender codes, and then I'm going to go on to some of the practices surrounding trans and gender fluid children, and then I'm just going to end with talking about three current studies that are giving some sort of direction to the field right now. Um, so please enjoy, bear with me, I've never edited videos before, so I hope you enjoy and thank you for listening. So my project is on gender fluidity and trans children, helping families to educate themselves on trans and gender non-conforming children. So what is transgender? So transgender is a term self-applied by a person whose gender identity varies from the one associated with their apparent biological sex at birth. It presupposes a fundamental distinction between sex, gender, and sexual orientation. So modernly, the word is used by persons who are either transgender, have a third gender, or a fluctuating gender, which is called gender fluid or gender nonconforming. And the idea of being an open and proud trans person in the LGBTQ plus community is only just become safe in our lifetime because there used to be a considerable risk towards inequality, and it still exists today. So there is an importance of pronouns, and they are as defined by the person and in describing their own existence, so don't make assumptions, always ask each person their preference. And this picture is of Sarah McBride, who is the first openly transgender U.S. Senator just this year. So what is gender nonconforming? So current research breaks down the changing relationship between children and the gender spectrum, challenging us to expand the boundaries of gender's well-worn categories. So children who do not fit the molds of previously understood male-female have taken on the names of gender variant, gender creative, transgender, and for some indigenous children, two-spirit. So other children have completely rejected the terms of boy and girl and are described as gender non-conforming or gender fluid. And in this picture here, this is actually a spectrum for teaching kids, and it actually breaks down the differences between identity, expression, physical attraction, and the assigned sex at birth. So I just wanted to show you a quick video here in their own words. My father is transgender, so that's what's really special about him. My mother, I'm happy that she gets to be happy, so it's super special for her. What's kind of different about me that sometimes kids don't do is about my clothing and my hair. I wear, like, boy clothes or I wear girl clothes or sometimes I wear, like, a girl shirt or boy pants. Well, transgender means you come out as a little girl or a little boy and then they started, hey, I don't feel like I'm a girl at all. So they come out as a girl and then are raised as a boy or come out as a boy and raised as a girl. And non-binary means that you don't believe that you're really a girl, but you don't believe you're a boy. I came out as trans when I was 26 years old. So essentially I lived a full adulthood being a woman prior. I was married before in a lesbian relationship that essentially dissolved because of my transition. I think it's important to speak to children about these aspects. For example, both of us were put into a box as a girl from birth, and we have these expectations that are thrown at us. And I think that boys and girls both have these expectations that society places on them. So I think that's really important from their own words. Um, so traditional terms, so they talked a little bit about this in the film, the gender codes, the codes of gender. So the gender display is when adult men and women act out the process whereby they perform the roles expected of us by social conventions. And this was said by Irving Goffman. Um, gender identities are socially constructed and we can question how society has allowed that construction in the first place. 
So some families become trapped in this code and find it confusing when a gender diverse child presents feelings outside of the binaries. So families must then look to find compassionate caregivers for their children and the parents must also decenter themselves from the treatments and their feelings around these things. So traditional versus modern. So traditionally children are taught these strict codes of gender and the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistics Manual of Mental Health in the 1980s actually described this gender diversity as an illness. So this concept of mental illness actually contradicts many non-Western cultures, including um, Indigenous Two-Spirit people at home here and the modern practices which now support children. So modernly, gender is now seen as being a matter of diversity, not pathology or illness. So what is the best medical practice for these children? So as this is a field that is evolving, doctors and families are debating the policies to most positively affect these children's lives. And studies are being conducted upon increasingly younger children around the world. Um, many research myths are surrounding these gender diverse children, and that has to do with a little bit of um, bias for some researchers. And they call them persisters versus desisters, which I think is a bit archaic because it suggests that some children grow out of this, and I don't like to think of it that way. Um, there's an ongoing heated debate uh, discussing gatekeeping procedures from children, so not letting them have certain things happen, and protecting medical practitioners from offering unethical or unfit advice, and how to foster the optimal health outcomes for these children. And this is actually the trans flag here with just a medical insignia on it. So the best methods for parents and schools. So there's actually a new language terms that are coming out, which we've talked about, non-conforming, diverse, variant, fluid, and they sort of act as a public intervention to help children reframe themselves as a positive um, within schools. And a lot of schools are actually adopting these practices in Canada. Younger years fluidity offers um, an ideal time to bestow parental validation that every child needs for their healthy emotional development. And parents often become the child taught parents where the parent follows their child's leads because the child just knows what's right for them. So finally, there are three current directions of studies, and one is the past practice, which is that older children and most adults were given gender or sex reassignment surgeries, where they felt it harder to tell younger children where they would be to predict on the gender variant and if they would persist or desist, which we talked about. Present day practice, like at the University of the Medical Center in Amsterdam, is a developmental trajectory of gender identity, which they allow to unfold on its own. And the future practice, which I think is going to be happening, is at the University of California, they encourage children to be supported in socially transitioning without medical or surgical intervention until later in their adolescent life, and then it can offer permanent physical changes. So thank you very much for listening. This is just a picture on raising gender creative kids. And here are my written references and my images and video references. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed.